Greetings and praise the Lord, everybody. We hope you've had a fine day and that you're having everything is okay at your home and wherever you might be tonight. We're so glad you joined us and we pray that we might sing some song or some word might be said that might encourage you or just kind of lift you up. I know we're living in trying times when this COVID-19 is uh, kind of making everybody have to stay in the house. There's a lot of change that's been done, but we'll get through it. We will get through it. So sit back if you would like or join in and help. But Brother Tony Hutchinson is doing the singing. Brother Kenny naturally is on the piano. So we hope you enjoy it. We're going to pray before we sit down. If you would like to bow your head, let's say a word of prayer. Now, our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we look to you in this time. You're in charge and everything is in your hand. We know that. We ask God for a blessing for our country and for the problems that we're having and for the things that are going seemingly going wrong. But we know, Lord, that you're, you're right there on the job and everything's in your hands. So we ask you to bless these, these words and these songs tonight as they go out. Would you bless them that the hearts might be touched of the people that's listening? We ask this, these favors in your great name, the name Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Tony. Sometimes I remember how I used to be living in sin. I tried to act happy and free, but I wasn't within. Just a bit tired of fooling around. I try to laugh your way through life, but you're not gaining ground. Why not try the Lord today? Just ask Him in your heart to stay.
Jordan River and he got down to the Jordan River and he went to, for the purpose of getting baptized. He wanted John to baptize him. And I thought, and I'm sure you have, but I've thought time and again, I've tried to study that and tried to understand why he didn't just tell John the Baptist, I, I want people to be baptized. I want them to, uh, to be submerged underwater. I don't want uh, just sprinkling, but submerge them. And when he got there, John told him, evidently Jesus told him, said, I need for you to baptize him. Uh, but John told him, said, why are you asking me to baptize you? It shouldn't be the other way around. I need for you to baptize me. So Jesus spoke then and he said, suffer to be so now. Let's go ahead with it because it behooved you and I to Amen. To show, if I can just use plain English, to show us the way to be baptized. I'm sure as they waited out in the water and got deep enough and as John baptized Jesus and Jesus then baptized John. Amen. The people standing around, they had been watching John the Baptist earlier and before Jesus got there and they decided uh, to get baptized. So everybody was getting baptized, but one thing that I, I'd like to point out with that is that John was baptizing unto repentance, not for the purpose, amen, that baptism needed to be so. And I looked at, at uh, Israel when they came out of Egypt. When they walked up the banks of the Red Sea and out of the water, amen, and uh, began to be the house of Israel again. They had been brought there for the purpose. They were going to their home that God had uh, designated for them, for the homeland that was given to them. But there's something that happened in that river, in that Jordan, uh, I guess I'd have to say, in the Red Sea, I mean, but something happened in that Red Sea that made a difference with the house of Israel. And that was that when they got on the other side, after they had went through the, the anxiety that they had felt on the banks of the Red Sea on the other side, and they stood there and watched this Pharaoh's army came up behind them and the Red Sea in front of them, and I, I don't know how deep the Red Sea is, but I read one time that it was about a mile or so deep. Now, whether it is or not, I don't know. But can you imagine standing before the Red Sea and having to, amen, to give Moses, amen, the go-ahead, God spoke to Moses and told him, said, have the people go forward. So when they stepped out and started in the, the Red Sea, the bottom of it, the, dry, the wind that dried the bottom up, and the Bible said they went across some dry land. And when they got to the other side, they stepped out of the, out of the, the great big, watery tunnel that come across to him and they got up on the bank and Miriam and some of the women amen they grabbed their tambourines and began to worship God and enjoy this wonderful time because they had been delivered but there's something happened that I want to point out and, and incorporate it in what I'm speaking about tonight amen what happened was according to the 10th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote about something, amen, and you have to wonder what Paul meant when he said what he did. Paul, amen, the Bible told us that, that Paul did, he said, I, I would not that you be ignorant, brethren, that our fathers passed through the sea and through the cloud. And all did eat of that spiritual meat that they meet and they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them and their rock was Christ. But notice something in that that I wanted to point out. Paul said they were all baptized. You see there's something happens when a person's baptized. It's not just a normal getting out of the 
water and get him wet. There's something that takes place within the individual. Amen. And the second chapter of Galatians kind of points that out. Amen. And it said, by faith. Faith by faith we believe in the operation of God. And I kind of claim, amen, that God operates on someone when they go in the water in a, in a, a spiritual nature, so to speak, in an earnest nature. Something happens to them inside that, inside that water. Amen. And uh, Paul in Romans 6 and 4. He said, bury it with Christ. There's an actual burying spiritually that takes place and Paul spoke of it and he said, bury it with Christ. And as Christ rose to, uh, to life again, the Bible said, so would we to walk in newness of life. Then when you look at what 1 Corinthians 7 or 5 and 17 said, said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So what I'm, I'm talking about, amen, is when Israel got across the Red Sea and stepped up on that bank, something had happened. It may not have been visible. It may not have been known exactly what took place in the life, but something did take place. And the seventh chapter of the book of Acts of the 38th verse, the Bible said he was in the wilderness speaking of Moses. He was in the wilderness with the church that was in the wilderness. You see, there couldn't be a church. There couldn't be a, a people, a man, that God could work with while they were still sinners, so to speak. They were still just natural beings. But when they came through that water, something changed, amen, and they became a spiritual being. And that's what Paul was talking about in that in 1 Corinthians 5, 17. He said, any man being Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are made new. So there's something that takes place in water baptism. But look now, let's, let's fast forward to the New Testament a little more, amen, and take a look at what happened in the sixth chapter of the book of Luke, the 47th verse. And he said, There said, If any man hear my sayings and do them, you see, there's something that has to be done after a person decides. Look at Paul in the. In, the Acts of the Apostles in that ninth chapter of the Acts of the Apostle Paul, the man that was slaughtering the, Jews, the Christians, God spoke to him, blinded him on his way to Damascus, but Paul, amen, went back and was blind and had to be led. But God was working, amen. It wasn't that Paul was going to stay permanently blind. He just wanted his attention for a moment. So Paul, Saul, as he was called then, his name hadn't been changed. But Saul, after he was blinded and led back to, to, to the city, God began to work with Ananias, a, a prophet, and wanted Ananias to go down and pray for Paul that the, he might receive his sight. And then Ananias kind of got a little anxious about that. He said, he said that he's the one that's been persecuting us. Let's don't get him. Let's don't do that. More or less what he said. But God told him, said, go, he's a servant. He's someone that I'm going to send to the Gentiles. I've got a job for him, but go to, so you go down there and pray for him. So Ananias went down, and he prayed for Saul. Saul, the Bible said, scales fell off his eyes, and he could see, and Ananias prayed for him. And when, Paul, when Saul got up, amen, and began to, to, uh, to see, was able to see, the 
the Bible made one extra little exclamation there and said he went immediately and got baptized. Something happened to Paul, but it was not okay until he went to the water and got baptized. Look at the eunuch in the, in the eighth chapter in the book of Acts. The eunuch was sitting in his chair and was driving along and everything was okay. He was studying and reading from the book of Isaiah. And when Philip had been taken down and wanted him, God wanted him to join himself with the ch a chariot with the eunuch. And he got in and they began to study of it. And then after a little bit, they were passing this big body of water and the eunuch looked over at Philip and said, Philip, what does it hinder me to be baptized seeing that there's water here? And Philip told him, said, nothing can hinder if you believe. And he said, I believe that Jesus, Jesus Christ, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And what happened was that they went down in the water. Another example, amen, of what really takes place when a person decides they want to be baptized. Listen, let's right quick go up to what Jesus said again. If any man hear my sayings, Luke 6, 47, any man hear my sayings and do them, it takes something to, to be done. Look, in the 18th chapter of uh, Luke, and a circumstance that took place there when the man that was a rich young, young ruler heard what Jesus did. He touched some little children. And when he saw what he could do after Jesus had left and just a, was gone on down the road apparently, this rich young ruler ran to him and said, Good Master, said, What must I do? The thing that we want to understand, and I'm sure you like I am, I want to make sure that I understand and that I do. So let's go over to John, to John's writing in the third chapter of John. And John wrote about Nicodemus coming and talking with Jesus. He came by night. He was a little afraid of the of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and etc. So he came to Jesus by night and Jesus spoke to him. There wasn't any conversation in the Bible about that between the two, but Jesus spoke up as Nicodemus got there and he spoke up and he said, Verily, verily, I said unto thee, except a man be born again. You see, there's something to do. There's something that has to take place when, when baptism is administered, amen. When something, amen, inside begins to change. And that's what Jesus was talking about. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Have to be born again. There has to be that spiritual birth. There has to be that birth, amen of the inner man because you see Adam and Eve when they fell from grace in the garden of Eden they fell from grace they lost that spiritual fellowship or relationship they had with God because they ate of the fruit that he commanded them not to so what happened was that they lost that spiritual nature Getting a, a, a human nature, a human nature was given to them, and somehow that has to be broke, somehow that has to be cured, somehow that nature has to be brought to the surface and be able to get rid of, because that's what the second chapter of the book of Colossians was talking about. There, Paul spoke in Colossians there, and he said, let me say it again. He said, having faith 
in the operation of God. You see, I believe God, they're in the water, a person, a man that goes down in that dark or watery grave, a man, in, and they do it in an earnest, sincere way. There's something inside, a spiritual change that takes place, a man. Look at the 16th chapter of Acts. Let me point that out and get that in with it with Paul. Because this was Paul. Paul and Silas when they went up. And their damsel was identifying them and claiming that they were doing this and doing that. And Paul got kind of irritated or aggravated with her. And he began to tell her to hush and she wouldn't, so they prayed for her. And the Sadducees got very angry because there was something about that damsel that gave them the opportunity. They made money from her. She was kind of a prophetess of, of sort, I guess, uh, is what it was, and they made money from her. But so they took Paul and Silas and put them in the, in, in the common prison and put a guard on each side, and there's, they were they were had their arms and their legs bound. And the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas began to uh, to pray, and after they prayed and began to sing praises unto God. All at once something happened. There was an earthquake that took place. And all of the stocks and the gates and the doors and everything to the prison and, the, and all that was binding them, the Bible said, fell away. And the jailer, realizing that his prisoners were all free, and he knew the severity that he, of the man that he served as uh, the jailer, so he decided he was going to kill himself and he pulled his sword and going to kill himself and the Bible said Paul spoke and he cried out and said don't harm yourself we're all here. And the man ran to him and knelt down and asked Paul and said what do we do? What do we need to do to be saved? And the first thing he did they went down and washed his wounds and baptized him there's something about baptism, amen, that nothing else can bring to pass in their life, but it's a spiritual change. Now, I want to stress that. I don't know how. Let's look at the 16th chapter of St. Matthew. Just a moment and, and kind of get an idea what baptism is all about, what it's for, why. I thought, why get baptized? What's the purpose? And I realized that Paul said this. He said, baptism is not for the putting away of the flesh. Baptism is not for the putting away of the flesh, but the answer of a clear conscience. To be able, a man, to tell Satan himself, to tell the devil, I've got the Holy Ghost, I can go back. To that 26th verse of that 14th chapter of St. John. And it said, when the Comforter come, which is the Holy Ghost, he'll lead you and guide you. And he spoke of the Comforter there four different times. They told him, and said, it's going to give you what you need to serve God. It'll give you that inner man that can, will be strengthened and guided and touched by your presence. Amen. And he can. He can make it amen. So when I go back to, to John, I want to continue that. Amen. And baptism is a, a clear means, amen, to get rid of. Let me, let me, I got a, a verse of scripture I believe I want to read. In the eighth chapter of the book of Romans, 
Beginning in verse 9. Said, but you're not in the flesh. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ. He is none of his. And in Christ being you. The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life. The spirit is life. The spirit that has been changed. The spirit that the difference has been made. Because it went to the water. It been baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And once they are baptized. Something takes place as I said. Let's go to the 16th chapter of Matthew now. For just a moment. Jesus on his way from Caesarea down to Philippi. On his way down to get up with the disciples that were ahead of him. When he got caught up with them and they kind of probably grouped around him, he spoke for some reason and wanted to know. And he asked his disciples, his apostles, he said, Who do I, who do the do men say that I the Son of Man am? Or they said, well, some say you're Elias, you're Jeremiah, you're one of the uh, prophets. In the 17th verse, 16th verse, Peter spoke up and he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In verse 17 then, verse 17 says this, Jesus speaking, he said, Peter, flesh and blood never revealed that to you. Never revealed what? That you were the Christ. Never revealed that to you. I wonder what Jesus was really talking about. I wonder what he was, what he was uh, talking and saying. He said, flesh and blood never revealed that. You didn't get that from somebody. You got that from heaven. You got that from God. He revealed that to you. He revealed who I am and who he was. He wasn't just the son of God. He was God himself. He wrote himself in flesh so that he might have the ability to go to the cross and die for you and I. But it was something that the natural man couldn't see. The rest of the apostles didn't see what Peter did. Peter saw this. And Jesus in the 18th verse said, And thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of the hell shall not prevail against it. And he said, I'm going to give you the keys. Now wait a minute. We're entering something here that we've got to be kind of interested in. We want to know what keys. Peter was maybe a little bit concerned that God was putting such a trust in him. I don't know how Peter felt, but I'm sure he must have felt elated or something rather when God gave him those keys. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of God. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of God. And whatever you loose on earth, I'm going to loose in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, I'm going to bind in heaven. So Peter had the keys. He's the man that had to be bothered to find out where Peter might possibly have used those keys because it's important, amen. I don't know if we can elaborate and say how important it is for somebody, amen, to recognize the keys to heaven, amen, because that's what those were. Those were keys that were given that we might go to heaven. Now look, with those being, the, with the keys being given to Peter, let's look now to John 3 and 5 for just a second. John 3 and 5, after Nicodemus had spoken, was kind of concerned about, I can't go in my mother's womb the second time. How can I be born again? And Jesus spoke then in that fifth verse and said, Verily, verily I say unto you, except a man be born of water, 
In the third verse, we found out that positively we had to be reborn. In the fifth verse, we find out the answer to how that is going to take place. So, he, so Jesus said, born of water and of the Spirit. There's got to be a spiritual change. There's got to be a change through the water, through the, the spiritual grave. We, you and I, are a part of the possibility that we can see. We don't have to guess at where the keys were or who, or who used the keys. Peter used them because God gave them to him. But what he did was he opened the door, the spiritual door to people, amen, like the, the 41st verse of that second chapter of Acts. It said something I want to put in there. That second chapter, verse 41, said, As many as believed, as many as wanted to and desired to be, said they were baptized. There was about 3,000 souls. So baptism is something, amen, that's essential and something that we have to incorporate in our life to make it so that we're not just people. We're children of God. And the church that was formed in the wilderness, that, that wilderness church, they were the ones that gave uh, some of the things that we have that came from that church. But God couldn't work with that church until they became baptized in water. Look at it. They had to be baptized, and then God gave them the Sabbath. He gave them their uh, tithes. He gave them, uh, he gave them, he, he couldn't work with just anybody. It had to be his church. And that's what he was working with when they came across is the church that they had become, the church in the wilderness. I've kind of been through quite a bit here. Looking at it and I hope I've not entertained you. I hope I haven't done something to irritate you. But I hope I've inspired you to take a look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. It doesn't make any difference how I believe or you believe. And that doesn't matter. It's what we do about it. It's what ensures us the ability to step inside to get to the place that we can be ready because that spiritual nature that we have, that old spiritual man has to be changed. We have to be changed. We have to be made new. We have to come out new out the, of the watery grave. So God bless you. Brother Tony is going to come back and sing one more song and then we'll probably dismiss and uh, hear from one another Sunday morning. We'll be back Sunday morning. Try to be back with us. Hopefully you can uh, be a part of it. God bless you. Brother Tony sing it.
Amen. In this message.